بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. We start first and foremost by praising the King, the Master, the Sustainer, the Creator of the seven heavens and the earth, and we send peace and blessings upon our beloved Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, the greatest Prophet of them all. The topic of tonight um, was the reality of dunya. You know, my brothers, many, many, many of you, I'm sure you'll, you've either heard my talk on YouTube or you've seen it, or you know. But the reminder benefits the believer, and I wanted to start off the night with a very, very famous story. I've mentioned it to you guys before, I'm sure I have. Um, it's very famous on YouTube, I believe Yusuf Estes made it very, very big lately. Now the story within itself, the asal of the story is that it's an Asra'iliyat. And it's the stories from the people of Banu Israel. And as far as the hukum on these stories is, the Prophet of Allah, he says, mention their stories. We don't say they're true and we don't say they're false. So we don't derive any halal haram. We simply take the benefit, you know, from the moral of the story. But the story within itself, my brothers and sisters, and you know, as I share it, there's a couple of things I need to clear before I start because I know some people get upset when I mention prophets. And I use language that is the boys. You know, I speak the language of the area. And some people feel that that's somewhat disrespectful, that you should better the language. And Wallahi, my intention is, is because I know when I use that language, people understand it better. So let me clear this up with any, you know, I, I, I'm not doing it to disrespect, you know, the, the, the story in any way, shape or form. But Wallahi, I do it so that the people, especially the, the younger boys, can really grasp the message. So that being cleared, I want you to leave the story, you know. I really want the brothers and the sisters don't be entertained by the story. Don't, don't, don't go, oh, well, look what happened to this guy in the story. I want you to imagine you're that person. Because wallahi, in truth, every person in this room has walked the shoes of this guy at one stage or another in his life. Anyway, so the story has it <coughs> that in the time of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, in the time of Jesus, he was traveling with some of his companions, traveling with some of the boys. So then they reached an area, bro, and they had the munchies. So they got hungry. That's what I meant, yeah, yeah. words like this, yeah. <laughs> so they had the munchies. So the boys got hungry. They get to the, you know, so they get to a particular area. And Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam, he collected whatever money they had. They collected whatever money they had. After collecting the money, he chose one of the companions. He says to him, look, you take this money, go into the town and buy us some food. We're hungry. So the man says, yeah, all right, that's no problems. Takes the money, goes into the town. When he goes into the town, he realizes that all the money he could buy was what? Three loaves of bread. That's all he could buy. Now I want to stop here because every one of us has been at this point in his life. The man looks at it and says, bro, I've only got three loaves of bread. And there must have been about 10 blokes back there waiting to eat. And if they're levels, he had no chance whatsoever, bro. So he's looking at the bread, he's thinking, bro, if I take this back, how much am I going to possibly eat? So what does he do? He eats one, then and there, he eats one, he polishes it off, and goes back to Jesus with only two loaves of bread. When he goes back to Jesus and he gives him the two loaves of bread, Jesus looks at the bread, alayhi salatu wasalam, looks at the man and he says to him, who ate the third loaf? Shuha, who ate the third loaf? The man's buckling, he's thinking, what the hell? He's thinking, when I ate the third one, I was alone, there was no one there. So now Jesus is asking about the third, so what does he do? He says, bro, Eid al-Quran, I only bought two. What did he say? He says, bro, wallah, he says, I only bought two. So Jesus doesn't argue with the man, you know. They carry on their journey, then they reach a destination, the companions that were successful in hunting a deer, they hunted the deer, they killed it, they cooked it, they ate it, until there was nothing left, bones, just a carcass. And then Jesus calls the man over. He sits him down, he says to him, look. And then by the will of Allah Azza wa Jalla, a miracle through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Jesus gives life to the animal in front of the man's very eyes. Imagine, it was just bones, and it comes back to life in front of their eyes and it runs away. So Jesus says to the man, I'm asking you by the one that gave life to this animal. Bro, who ate that third loaf of bread, man? If the guy wasn't feeling pressure before, now he's thinking, yeah, Allah. 
<laughs> Sneaking cuz, I swear I only bought two. You know, sometimes my brothers, we make a mistake in life. And you could have corrected that when you first made the mistake. But because of a lie, uh, because of a lie, because we were put into a corner, we make the situation worse on ourselves. The man could have, back then, he could have said to him, look, well, I got hungry cows and, you know, and I was afraid if I bring the food, there's going to be nothing left. Now, look how deep he's falling. He's seen, he knows very well, bro. The animal came to life in front of him. Anyway, Jesus doesn't argue with the man, they continue on. They eventually reach a river, the river was over flooded. There was no boats to cross the river and they had to get to the other side. So Jesus, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he, he gathers the companions and by the will of Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows them to walk on the surface of the water. All of them, imagine all of them as a group. They walk on the surface of the water and then they cross the river and get to the other side. And then Jesus calls the man over. He says, I'm asking you by the one that allowed us to walk on the water, man. Who ate that third loaf of bread? Now, now the man's feeling the heat, bro. He says, honestly, there was only two. They carried on until they reached their final destination. Jesus calls the man over. They sit down on the floor. And Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he gathers together three piles of dirt. Imagine. Imagine you're this man. He puts together three piles of dirt. He sits the brother down. And by the will of Allah, جل, he turns the dirt into gold. Then he says to the man, he says, look, I tell you what. He says, one pile is for you. One pile is for me. And the third is for the one that ate that third loaf of bread. The guy, Eid al Quran, I ate the bread. <laughs> he sees the third loaf. He says, I ate the bread. Allahu Akbar, now there's papers involved, there's gold. The guy's eyes, Bala Jesus, Bala Mabar Shu, Bala. Allahu Akbar, there's gold. So the man, when he sees dunya, he sees gold, he says, Bro, I ate the third loaf. Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he says, Look, for you, you have all three piles, but you can't join us anymore, man. What does the man say? He says, go bro, go, look at this fortune that I now have, man. You know, my brother Ismailash, let, let, me, let, me, let me stop here for a sec, yeah? How many of us, wallahi, we've sold our deen for a small price, man? Yes, we are walking with prophets, and yes, prophets are sitting us down and telling us, yes, yes, I know, I know. But how many of us for a small price in this world, for a small price, we sold our deen? So now the man's kicking back, bro. He's looking at all this dahab, he's looking at all this money. He's thinking, Allahu Akbar, what do I buy first, bro? Do I buy the C63 first? Is it the A? He didn't know what he's going to buy first. So he's sitting there, he's looking at the gold, he's admiring it. Isa and his companions take off. Shortly after, three thieves come by. When they see the man and three piles of gold, the maths is pretty straightforward, bro. First thing they did is they knocked him off straight away. They killed the men. Three thieves, three piles of gold, halawa. But they too were hungry, man. So one of them says, look, I'll take some money. I'll go to the town. I'll buy some food. We'll have a feed. And then everyone takes his pile of gold and we call it a day. Beautiful, man. He goes to the town, my brothers. And on the way, he starts thinking to himself, you know. He's thinking, how can I get that money, man? And while he's over there buying the food, the two that stayed behind are thinking, how can we take his money? So they planned and plotted, and he planned and plotted. They said, when he returns, we'll kill him. They said, what? Well, when he returns, we'll kill him. And we'll split his share in half. When the man reaches the town, he buys the food, he says, bro, 100% they're going to do something to me. So what does he do? He poisons their food. He comes back with the food before he could do anything. They killed him straight away. As he knew. As he planned. <coughs> well, they sat down. They had a feed. <laughs> and little did they know the what? The food was poisoned. Wallahi, shortly after they also died. Now Isa alayhi salatu wasalam and his companions, they're walking back. They seen their former companion. 
the three thieves and the three piles of gold sitting there untouched. So Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he looks over to his companions and he says to them, this is hayat al-dunya. He says, this is the life of this world and this is what it does for the one who runs after it, man. That's dunya, my brothers and sisters. Wallahi, you can run and run and gather and collect as much as you want. You're leaving and you're leaving everything behind. You know what? Wallahi, you're leaving everything behind. And my brothers, honestly, how many of us, we've sold our deen for a very small price. And some of you think, nah, cuz me, I'm a soldier. I'm a, I'm a soldier. Wallahi, my brothers, the tricks of shaitan are far greater than us. When I was in the UK, one of the mashayikh there, he was sharing his story with us. And I heard it personally, yani. It's a very famous story. Just to give you an example. One of the mashayikh there, he says, I was hired by one of the masajid as an imam. He says, I was hired as, as an imam by one of the mosques. He says, and I was new to the area. Really, I, mean, I, I, I this is a true story, so I really want you to really live it out, yeah? He says I was the Imam, and I used to take the bus from my house to the town, to, to, to that area, and then I would walk to the masjid, it wasn't far from there. And he says because I was the Imam, when I would go to the masjid, I mean, he went in his abaya and the amama and the whole, and the whole shebang. He says, so I would take this bus. He says, one day I jumped on the bus and, and uh, it was a new bus driver. So it wasn't someone that, that he had seen. He says, I jumped on the bus, I paid him for my fare and he gave me the change. He says, when he gave me the change, I didn't really look at what he gave me until I went back to the back of the bus, I sat down. He says, when I sat down, I looked at the money and I realized he gave me 20 pence. In the UK, 20 pence, yeah, and he were talking nothing but cents. Like 10, 10 cents at most. He says, so you know, like I sat there and I said, man, the guy gave me more. He said, and then the conversation started happening in my head. And honestly, how many times have you been in this position? Allah, he's thinking, you know what? It's 20 pence. It's nothing, bro. Don't worry about it. You know what I mean? Don't embarrass yourself. They're a big company anyway, bro. And really, what's 20 cents going to do, eh? Hala, if he was a Leba, 100% he would have said, like, Ruh, bro, they're all dogs anyway, bro, they're all kafar, they're all going to hell. Like, rip them. So the man's sitting there and he's thinking, bro, it's 20 cents, should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I? He says, and Wallahi, for the whole trip, this is the conversation that's happening. He says, you know, like, it wasn't about the money, it was just... And then the Sheikh was saying, he was saying, when I got to my bus stop, he said, when I got to my destination, he said, I got off my chair, I'm walking down the bus, I'm walking to the front door, he says, Wallahi, well, and I'm still saying to myself, do I give it, then I give it? He says, and then as soon as I got to the bus driver, he said, I don't know what went into me, man. He said to me, I turned over to the bus driver. I said to him, look, man, you gave me 20 extra. He goes, no, I didn't give you 20 extra. He goes, I gave it to you intentionally. He says, why did you give it to me intentionally? He goes, well, for three years I've been looking into Islam. And he said, when I came and I seen you dressed the way you were dressed, I knew that you were an imam. He said, so today I was going to make my decision. If you were honest, if you were honest, I was going to embrace Islam. But if you kept that money, I, he said, I knew that you were liars like everyone else lies. So now the Sheikh is speaking about himself. He says, I gave him the money. He says, I got off the bus. He says, when the bus drove off, he says, I started crying. I said to him, why? Because the man accepted Islam or he was about to accept Islam, he gave me la wallahi la. I said to him, why? He said to me, I almost sold my deen for 20 cents, bro. He said, I almost sold Islam. I sold the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal for 20 cents. Now you're thinking, bro, I would never do it. But how many of us, honestly, how many of us have sent our wives to Centrelink? Send your wife to Centrelink. In, in a scarf or jilbab and even, the, even today niqab. She's got three kids in a pram, one on her hand, one in her stomach, and she's walking in signing papers saying, I'm a single mother. Why? Because you get a couple of dollars at the end of the week, bro. So 
So don't tell me, oh, you know what, well, well, I'll never do it. Wallah, because shaitan comes in different ways, man. How many of us hurt for a little lie? Little lie, the brother's buying a C63, goes to the RTA, yeah, bro, I bought it for six grand, man. Why? Because he pays a little bit less stamp duty. Muslim with a bead. Signing on paper, lying. <coughs> Why? To save a couple of bucks. He says, I almost sold my deen, bro, for 20 cents. That's dunya, man. That's dunya. What is this world? Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, what is this world in reality? In reality, Malish, let me be straight out with you, man. Am I allowed to speak Quran? Am I allowed to speak Quran? I won't tell you the opinion of some sheikh. He can well argue and tell me, Kaz, who's the sheikh? What's his asal? What's his name? Forget it. Quran. Can I speak Quran? Allah Azza wa Jal says about dunya. And he created dunya. So he knows it better than you, better than me, better than anyone. He says, وَمَا حَيَاتُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ you know what one of the opinion is about Mata' al ghurur You know what Allah Azza wa Jal is saying this world is? Mata' al ghurur my brothers, with all due respect to the sisters that, 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 that are here. Mata' al ghurur is a rag the women used to use as a tampon. And it's not just a rag. Allah Azza wa Jal isn't saying it's a rag. He's saying it's a used rag. Yeah, and it's already got blood on it and it's of no benefit to anyone. This is dunya. Not my words, Allah Azza wa Jalla is saying, and He created it, so He knows it for its reality. He says, this is this dunya, this is what you're running after, this is what every one of us, deep down in his heart, is dying for, waking up for, working 12, 13, 14 hours for, bro. This, for use tampon, bro. And I wish it's that, bro, we're punching on now because of it. We're going to war on the streets now, Muslims are bluntly killing Muslims. Why? For use tampon. We've sold our deen. Wallahi, we've sold our deen. Go to any masjid, any masjid you like on a, well, any masjid for a fajr prayer. And see how many people choose Allah over dunya. Go, I'm not going to tell you Allah, go, you, your own masjid, choose the own masjid you want. Go there for Jum'ah, then go there the next morning for Fajr. And then the same crowd, you know what's funny, you tell, Wallahi, brother, deen or dunya, astaghfirullah, kaz, what are you calling me a kafir, bro? Deen, brother, deen. Allah comes first in my life. Allahu Akbar, beautiful. You know, my brothers, Allah Azza wa Jal, He's not looking for words. If it's words, we're all awliya here. If it's words, forget it. I'm the biggest aflamji on the face of the planet, bro. I'm on levels. But Allah's not looking for words. What's Allah looking for? Action. Because actions, my brothers, they speak far louder than words. Far louder than words. The same ummah that tells your brother, I believe in Allah. And I believe that Allah is a razzaq. And I believe it's Allah who gives and takes dunya. These same people, these same people, for Salat al-Fajr, everyone is... <laughs> but then at 6.30 in the morning, he's up on his feet, buying a za'atar manushi with a V and a cigarette, going to work. I'm not saying this is haram, but seriously, what have you chosen? Deen or dunya? The same ummah that says to me now, nah, brother, it's Allah, 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 for Fajr is asleep. But then when he comes to work, Wallahi, if his boss tells him, because you got to be at three in the morning, like, tikram ayunak, bro. What have we chosen, man? What have we chosen? So it's not about, you know, you, you ask yourself, what have I really, really chosen? Have I chosen deen? Or have I chosen dunya? What has gotten the better of me? Rasulullah he knew the reality of this dunya, man. Sometimes people think that, you know what, being a Muslim means you have to be a hater for dunya. No. The Prophet of Allah didn't come to tell us to hate dunya, no. He came to expose dunya to its reality. He came to show you how to take the best from dunya and leave the rest of it behind. He came to teach us, and he says, he says in the hadith, 
He says, the dunya mal'una wa mal'unun ma fiha. He says, this world is cursed. There's no good in this world, trust me. He says, and whatever inner is cursed, except what? He says, except the remembrance of Allah, more or less. He says, except the remembrance of Allah, or seeking knowledge, or teaching, or anything around this. <coughs> What's this world, my brothers, really? Wallahi, my brothers, you take nothing with you. My sisters, you take nothing with you. This world is temporary. It's temporary. Today you're here, tomorrow you're gone. That's the truth. What did one of the kings of the past, he says to his men, he says, when you bury me, bury me and stick my hands out of the grave. He says, bury me naked and stick my hands out of the grave. So his men were amazed. And they said, we understand that you want to go naked, all right. But why stick your hands out of the grave? He says, let it be known that this king, when he left dunya, he left empty handed. He took, he took nothing with him, bro. My brothers, wallahi, all your problems and all your dramas and whatever you're going through, it's going to finish as soon as your time in this dunya finishes, man. Harun al-Rashid, one of the great khulafa of this ummah, one of the great leaders centuries ago, yeah? I think he conquered almost one third. One third of the world was under his empire. And then one of the scholars that he was sitting with, he says, look, he says, look at what we've accomplished. He's telling the scholar, look at what we've accomplished as far as dunya is concerned. So the scholar says to him, he says to him, brother, do you know what the equivalent of your accomplishment, everything you own? He says, do you know what it is in reality? He says, now what? He says, well, I'll tell you what it is. He says to me, if I invited you over, look at, look at Malish, it's, it's, it's a bit deep, yeah? But think about it. The scholar says to me, says, look, if I invited you over to my house and I fed you a lot of salty food and you became very thirsty after, very thirsty, and there was no water, no water anyway. He says, and I possess the only cup of water. He says, well, what would you pay for the cup of water? He goes, bro, I'll, he goes to him, bro, I'll give you half my kingdom. For? For a cup of water. He says to him, what if I give you the water? And then you had to go to the toilet to do a number one. And you're busting. And you couldn't go anywhere. And you're really, really busting. He says, and I was the only one that had the means to allow you to relieve yourself. He says, what would you pay for you to relieve yourself? He says, bro, I'll give you the other half. He says, to you and all of your kingdom are worth a cup of water and a bit of urine, man. He says, you and your whole kingdom, in reality, what's it worth? You're prepared to give it all up for a cup of water? Huh? And a little twinkle at the end, bruh. That's reality, man. That's reality. My brothers and sisters, I'm not here to tell you, well, I hate this dunya. No, no, but take dunya for what it is. It's temporary, man. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he was with Abdullah ibn Umar. And he says to Abdullah ibn Umar, young boy, Abdullah was nicknamed what? What was the nickname of Abdullah? The son of Umar ibn al-Khattab. He was nicknamed Majnoon al-Sunnah. <coughs> that was his name. Majnoon? Whacked? Wacky? Crazy? Majnoon al what? Sunnah. Abdullah ibn Umar followed the footprints of Rasulullah to the T. To the T. To the point he was that bad. Good really by now terms. He was that bad that once he was walking in a place on his horse. And he was walking and there were some people there and there was nothing there. And as he was walking, he ducked his head down and then he put his head back up. People looked around and said, what is wrong with this bloke? <laughs> so they said to him, Abdullah, what did you do that for? He says, I remember years ago when I was with Rasulullah, he came to this place. There was a tree right there and there was a branch. And when he was walking, he, he bent his head down at that point and put his head back up. He said, I didn't want to move. He says, I didn't want to cross that place. 
and not do the action of Rasulullah, even though the tree wasn't there, man. He was that cracked to the point. But the branch wasn't even there anymore. He says, I wasn't going to go past until I bent my head like Rasulullah bent it. And he followed him to the T. Abdullah says, I was a young boy. He says, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he grabbed me by my shoulders. And for the Arabs at that time, when you grab someone by his shoulders, what does it mean? It means, bro, what I'm about to tell you now is very important. So Abdullah is saying, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa grabbed me, bro. Look at this honor, man. He says, he grabbed me by my shoulders and he says, Abdullah. He says, kun fi dunya ka'annaka gharib. He says, Abdullah, live in this dunya like a stranger, like a traveler. Abdullah says, Wallahi, from that day on, from that day on, he says, if I live to see the morning, I never planned on seeing the night. And if Allah gave me life to see the night, he says, by Allah, I never planned on seeing the morning. Look at the example, look at the analogy Rasulullah is giving us. A traveler, a stranger. My brothers, have you ever been to a place and you're a stranger? Anyway, anyway, like, I'm sure, you know, I know for, for me, maybe, you know, like when I, when I, when I go down north, uh, whatever, in Vaucluse or in Double Bay and whatever, and I have to walk out and go to the shops, yeah, Allah, get me the hell out of there, bro. I'm uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable, why, you're a fish out of water. Fish out of water. You, you, wallahi, you don't even absorb the area. Like, I, I, don't, I don't even, just get me out, bro. Get me out. That's a stranger. He says, or a traveler. And I love the analogy of the traveler. Why? My brothers, when you travel, my sisters in this dunya, when you travel, what do you take with you, man? Do you take your car? Do you take your house? Do you, you take a bag, man. You take a bag. If you're lab, you take a really big bag. But nevertheless, it's a bag. True? It's a bag. Maybe your aunt will give you the ghaseli, take it to your uncle in Lebanon. Other than that, really. But in all, in all, what do you take with you? What do you travel with? The necessities, man. I'm going to an area that I don't know. What do you do? You usually jump on online. What's the weather like there? If it's really hot, do you take winter clothes with you? You might take a jumper in case I get caught out. Minimums, minimums, bare minimums. Do you take all your wardrobe? You take what I need, man. That's how you should really live in dunya. The bare minimum, man. What do I need to get by? What do I need to get by? And then he says, what, you're a traveler? He says, this world, he says, he's speaking about, he's speaking about himself. He says, my example, my example. To this world, it's like someone walking by, someone who's traveling, he sees a tree. He sees a tree, someone's walking in the desert, he sees a tree. He says he takes some rest under the tree, takes some rest for an hour or two, and then picks himself up and continues on. He says, that stay, those two hours of rest, he says, that's my dunya, man. Brothers and sisters, wallahi, that's what you're doing here, man. Anyone here traveled? Anyone ever flown to Saudi or to Lebanon? Yeah? You fly where first to? Dubai. Abu Dhabi, Dubai. And you're there in transit. Usually for how long? Three, four hours tops, yeah? Three, four hours. You're there in transit. Look at the analogy of Rasulullah He's telling you dunya, really, dunya is Dubai airport. Really? Dunya is Dubai airport and your destination is where? Where, wherever it is, whether it's Saudi or Lebanon. But in reality, what's your destination? Where does everyone here want to go? To Jannah. And I'm here. Did you ever in your life go to Dubai airport? I want you to imagine. Me and Yas, me and Yas, we went to Dubai. And we're in transit there for three hours. Okay, and my connecting flight is at gate 54. So me and Yas arrive. He looks at the time, he says, bro, we've only got a few hours, man. There's no point. Where's gate 54? And he starts walking off the gate 54. Says, Mahabulus, come along. I tell my cousin, I'm not coming with you. Show me that. Bro, look at this airport, bro. Look how mad it is. 
يا عيب تكيريز برا سي ذا شوبس بعد هاف ا بوت يو كان سموك ان ات اند في اوت سايد يو كان سمل ات برا والله يو كان سمل ات سيستمي ابوت برو ا كونكتنج فلايز ان ا فيو اورز وي نيد تو بي ويتنج ات جاي 54 اتمي ابوت كاز مان اول رايت ليتس جست ات ليست انجوي اور تايم هير ان دبي سيستمي ابوت ات ان ايربورت اتمي ابوت I want to buy a house, man. You're laughing. But that's what we're all doing here. I'm not saying buying a house is haram now. Come to me. Hublus, bro. You're saying that if one buy a house? No, no. But the concept, the concept of it. But if I told you I went to Dubai airport and I bought a house, I started looking for a wife, opened up a business, and my connecting flight is in four hours. Here, tell me, bro, you're a spinner. <laughs> Wallahi, we're laughing because we know. Connecting flight is when? In four hours. What are you doing in four hours? You might go to the toilet, grab a feed, buy a sandwich. You might buy something small for someone. But that's all you really do. And then you go to gate 54 and you wait for your flight. Wallahi, four hours is a long time. No one here is guaranteed four minutes. And in reality, what are we all doing, man? We're making dunya what? Our home, man. We're making what? Dunya our what? Our home. And my brothers, the reality of it all is, we need to understand, and I'll end with this. I can see the brothers are getting tired. The reality of dunya, and I gave this example when I was here last time, you know, when we spoke about Jannah and that. My brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He designed dunya in such a way it can never please you. You can never be satisfied here, my brother. My sister, wallahi, no matter what you have, you will never, ever be happy. Designed by Allah this way, the only time you will ever see true happiness is where? Is in Jannah. This world can never satisfy the hunger of man. Never. And I give this example all the time. It's a funny example, but it's true. And I'm sure many of you, so I speak about myself so no one gets upset, no one gets offended. I remember when I was young, I was a little boy. Does anyone remember when the Nintendo first came out? Yeah? But the original. The, the box one, the one with the, had the duck hunt. That. When that thing came out, bro, I couldn't care less about anything else in the world. All my happiness, and all my fikr, and all my concern, and all that I ever wanted to live for was that Nintendo, bro. Little, I was a young boy, man. Mom, dad, mom, dad, I'll clean the house, I'll clean the car, I'll clean my shoes, I'll clean this, I'll clean that. Please, 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 please. And everyone else around me is buying it, and wallahi, you know, subhanAllah, we're out of time. My mom and dad were doing a hajar, bro. So this Nintendo business, like, ruh kahash halak, man, Allah tukni man ala adhi, bro. But in my heart, I'm burning, I want it. Why? Because I was convinced, like you're convinced that the house you want to buy is going to bring you happiness. Like you're convinced to have a car you really want is going to bring you happiness. I was convinced, same, that this Nintendo was going to change my life. Until my mom eventually, she saved up enough money. And then Allah, she bought me the Nintendo, bro. And wallah, my smile was from ear to ear, man. Happiness, true happiness. I didn't know how school would finish. I was doing these ones home. <laughs> these ones. Why? Happiness is there. Happiness was at home. How long did my happiness last? Until the Super Nintendo came out. <laughs> and because it took my mom so long to buy it, she bought it almost before the new release of the Super Nintendo. So the gap between my Nintendo and the Super was like very short, bro. Wasn't like the guy who bought it three years ago. Ya Allah, come on man. So what happened to my happiness? This isn't happiness, this is chat. I can't continue on like this. So I come up to my mom. Oh Allah, mom, you know. <laughs> the Nintendo you bought for us and that, Allah, honey, thank you very much, but mom. Super Nintendo is out, man. <laughs> and this is it. This was my happiness, and I was convinced beyond all doubt. And even though I had a Nintendo, I had that thing that was supposed to give me happiness. But where was my heart now? 
I can't keep telling you about Super Mario Brothers and you're telling me about Mario Kart. It doesn't work. <laughs> Tell me about the left and the right button and my right shoe and I was like, this misery. What was supposed to bring me happiness was now bringing me the biggest misery of my life. And I kept insisting and begging my mum until she got me what? She got me the Super Nintendo. What happened when I got the Super Nintendo? Yahra Abu, the Nintendo 64 came out. Ya Allah. And this is my life, bro. Nintendo 64, then the Nintendo Cube, then the Nintendo Mabarif Ash, and then... And my heart is being ripped apart, bro. Left and right, left and right. Ultimate happiness, ultimate lows. Ultimate happiness, ultimate lows. Until eventually I got to a point where what? You still playing computer games? Psh! I gotta start driving, bro. I remember crossing the days off the calendar, man. <coughs> crossing the days into what? Until I turned 16 so I can get my L's. Then I got my L's. Look, look, I'm sure everyone here, I'm sure everyone here, uh, to one point or another, even if you're old, young, every one of you has walked through these shoes. I was convinced beyond all doubt the misery in my life is because I can't drive. I need a license. Then I got my L's. Then I got my P's. I got my license. Now what was the pain in my life? I need a car, bro. I can't keep driving my dad's Taraga van around. Bloody embarrassing. You remember the first car you ever bought? Does anyone here remember the first car they bought? They're the biggest POS on the face of the planet, bro. The biggest heap of crap. But I drove that thing like it was a Lamborghini Gallardo, bro. In the streets until they called you a grunk. Did you care? Honestly, did you care? Like, call me what you want, bro. I'm cruising around. Let the system in my car was worth more than the car. I started going, wallahi, there he is. Brighton, I never knew Brighton before that. Now, wallahi, I was doing laps around the place. Why? But, but really, why? It was happiness. It was happiness. Now, that first car was the best. Now, wallahi, you wouldn't drive it if I paid you to. I'm going to jump in there. Are you serious? And you've been changing cars since then. We've been changing cars since then. Are we happy? Honestly, are we? Wallahi, brothers are rolling out cars, rolling them out from the factory. Oh, didn't you get one with a sunroof? Yours doesn't have a sunroof? <laughs> nah, bro, I don't have a sunroof. That's chat, bro. What a spinner, man. That's dunya, man. And then for the other boys, Malesh, let's, let's, let's spice it up. Am I allowed to spice it up or do we need to end it? We spice, huh? There's a bunch of spinners, bro. After the car, what, what happens when you get a car? Honestly, am I going to still keep driving around if this bike's head next to me, bro? I need an L guy sitting next to me, man. What's my problem in life now? I got to get married, man. I got to get married. I can't keep doing this. Cause wallahi, wallahi bro, ha Allah, as soon as I get married, I'm gonna give my life to Deen. How many times you heard that, man? How many sisters? Wallah, as soon as I get engaged, wallah, I'll start wearing the hijab. <laughs> Have you heard that, that? Have you heard that one? Until she's got three kids, still unscarved. Uh, yeah, soon, soon. This, wallah, these are the tricks of dunya, man. Tricks of dunya. Sisters, the poor thing, she's, she, 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 look, look, look at the sickness. The sister thinks that if I cover myself, Allah will deprive me of a husband. So what should I do? Let me fall in sin to do something halal. Brothers are now falling in sin, falling in haram. The brother has neglected his deen, neglected salah, lost all hope, all yaqeen in Allah Azza wa Jal. Because I need to get married. And up until I get married, I'm not going to pray, I'm not going to fast, I'm not going to go to the masjid. My happiness, my problems, my dramas is in the fact that I'm not married. Babe, all the single boys here. Brothers come up to me, hopeless, <laughs> bro. Allah, bro. Allah, bro. Allah, I can't do this anymore, bro. I've got to get married. Because, man, hook the brother up. Hook a brother up. What on the skin, eh? And the single boys are thinking, no, 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 bro, trust me, trust me, I know, cuz. <laughs> but if you're single, please, go to anyone who's married, especially the older guys, tell him, cuz, did you find happiness in marriage or you didn't find it? 
And he'll tell you the truth, bro. He'll tell you the truth. Did you hear the joke? A young boy goes with his mother that I went to a wedding. Uh, this is new to him. So he goes to the mom, he goes, his mom goes, how come the bride's in white? She goes, this is the best day of her life. This is the day she's been waiting for. This is the day of happiness. This is the day of joy. This is the day of... So, oh. Yes, sir. So why is the why is the groom in black? <laughs> <laughs> well, <I'm just laughs> and that's the truth, man. That's the truth. Every one of us here is convinced that because when I get married, I'm gonna find happiness and I walk those shoes. People start telling me about what? The honeymoon. You heard that? Look at, honestly, look how nice the name is, eh? Honey Moon. <laughs> I thought honeymoon means what? Oh, I was gonna go to Malaysia, go to the hotel, and what? Honey was gonna fall from the sky and from the roof and my shoe. And, and khalas, bro, I couldn't care less. Wallahi, some brothers, when it comes to marriage, he's so convinced that this is his happiness. He ends up marrying a woman that's not good for his deen. A woman that all of his family is totally against. Wallahi, we do the ajayib. We do the ajayib, bro. We marry, we marry. Oh my heart, oh my heart. People, you think, cuz what were you thinking? What were you thinking? <laughs> but we go through extreme measures. Extreme measures. I remember when I got married, I was about to go on my honeymoon, an old man came up to me. Oh, Allah, now, now, I want to know where he is. So I can kiss his feet. He sees me happy, he's obviously miserable. <laughs> yes, why are you so happy? <laughs> I said, I'm going on my honeymoon, bro. Ali Asal, Allah Asal, bro. He said to me, I can enjoy the Asal. I said, What do you mean? He said, I'm going to go on the honeymoon. He gets me the first few bites, yeah, they're honey, bro. I said to him, Yeah, he gets me then down the bottom, it's something else. Mash, with all due respect. I said to him, Nah, because it's not like that. He gets me the all right. I'm not going to tell you about me, 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 on my honeymoon, bro. Three days into my honeymoon, wallahi, I wanted to throw off from the hotel room, bro. Open the window and just do those ones. I didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign up for this. Babe, I'm not having a go at my wife. That's the reality, man. That's reality. How many of us now, we're having marriage problems, why? Because we didn't think beyond the marriage. We didn't think beyond the wedding day. We didn't, we, 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 I got married, yeah, and so what do I do now? My brothers and sisters, your happiness, wallah, is not in these things, man. Yes, we get married. Yes, we work. Yes, we buy a car to get on with life. Yes, I might buy a house if I can afford it through halal means. Yes, to shelter my family. Of course, this is all, this, this is all, you know, these are all the requirements of life. Yes, we do these things, but not, not at the price of sacrificing my deen, man. Never, ever put dunya before deen. Never. Wallahi, my brothers, how many of us, how many of us, because of work, because of work, how many Muslims on a weekly basis, they miss Jum'ah. Why? Because my boss doesn't let me go, man. My boss doesn't what? My boss doesn't let me go. Or because of uni. They miss Jum'ah. Why? Because my boss or my teacher, whatever, doesn't let me go. Muslims that are stuck in jobs where they're not allowed to grow their beads. He actually wants to grow it. I'm not talking about the guy who doesn't want to grow it. That's a different story. This guy actually wants to grow it. But because of his job, you know, his boss, you know, because look, you know, I work as a concierge, or, you know, what I have to do with people, and, and it's not really befitting. Allahu Akbar, man. My brothers, let me tell you something. Do we worship Allah or do we worship dunya, man? You know what it means to worship? Many of us, when we, when we say, you know, this guy worships dunya, we think what? That this guy, he puts a hundred dollar note down on the floor and he makes sajda to it. No. You know what it means to worship? It means to obey. To worship someone is to what? Is to obey him. So when my boss says to me, get up at seven, and I'm up at seven, and Allah tells me, wake up at four, and I don't wake up at four, who do I obey? Who? When boss says to me, no Jum'ah, Allah says to me Jum'ah, and I don't get a Jum'ah because my... 
Who do I really obey? Allah or dunya? <coughs> so when I obey dunya and I don't obey Allah, am I worshipping Allah or am I worshipping dunya? Ooh, it's a big one now, eh? That's a heavy one, huh? Brothers and sisters, that's reality, man. That's reality. This world, my brothers, is wallahi, you take nothing with you, man. You take nothing with you, bro. No matter who you are, wallahi, no matter how many houses you buy, <coughs> no matter how many... Jibreel, alayhi salatu wasalam, he comes down to Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Imagine, bro, imagine. Imagine. <coughs> Jibreel comes down to the Prophet of Allah. Like, look at this conversation, bro. Look at this conversation. Imagine this conversation. Jibreel says to Muhammad, he says, Ya Muhammad, Ish ma shit. O oh Muhammad, O oh Messenger of Allah, live for as much as you desire. Eventually you will what? You will die, man. He says, You will die. He says, O oh Muhammad, love whoever you want. Eventually you will what? You will depart. He says, oh Muhammad, do as you please. Eventually you'll be held accountable and responsible for your actions, man. My brothers and sisters, don't get caught up in this world. Wallahi, this world is nothing. Take this world for its reality. It's an illusion. Yesterday we were young, healthy, fit, good looking, whatever. Now we're starting to feel pain in our knees. Now we're starting to get some white hairs coming out. Now we're starting... Tomorrow you're gone, man. That's the cycle, bro. My brothers and sisters, we need to make deen our focus. We need to make Allah Azza wa Jal our focus. The scholars give a beautiful analogy. Scholars give a beautiful, beautiful analogy. And I really want to share it with you, yeah? They say, imagine the imagine deen, imagine deen was the sun. And your shadow was dunya. They say if you take the deen, so the sun, and you throw it behind your back, meaning you make it the least of your worries. Where's the sun now? Behind me. So where's my shadow now? It's in front of me. They say if you throw Deen behind you, the sun, your shadow will be in front of you. And no matter how fast you run after your shadow, you'll never catch it. Why? Because it's ahead of you, man. No matter how much you run after this dunya, my brother, you'll never ever ever catch it. But then they say, you know, if you grab this sun, if you grab the Deen, and you put it in front of you, and you make that your focus, and you make that your priority, where's your shadow now? Now it's running after you, isn't it? Now it's chasing you. And that's the reality. When you make deen your focus, you make Allah Azza wa Jal your focus, deen, dunya will run after you. And then any time you want your dunya, I don't have to go far, bro. I turn around and I pick it up, it's there. It's there. <coughs> My brothers, Malish, we've gone too long, man. Anyway. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to bring the reality of dunya into our hearts. And my brothers, wallahi, and sisters, things to take home now is... Get married. Yeah, get married. The throw from the hotel room, eh? <laughs> no, don't. Um, things we need to do is continuously speak about the reality of dunya. Don't let things <clears throat> grow in your heart. You know what I do? I'll share this with you. This is my personal tactic. Don't go around now and put it down people's throats and people say, well, Allah is what is teaching people. Do this to yourself. This is what I do to myself. Whenever I see something that, heck, my heart starts doing these ones too and my eyes start glittering, what do I say? Use tampon. Ya Allah, what an anticlimax. Straight away. Straight away. Reality. Nah, mama. <laughs> Huh? Straight away, don't let things grow in your heart. When brothers are sitting there and they're talking about something, talking about dunya, talking about how mad this is and how hectic this is, with wisdom, try to redirect their focus. Try to redirect their focus. And this is what Rasulullah did after one of the battles, after one of the battles, one of the companions, he, he, he you know, after the battle, the companions used to take the, the booty of war, whatever was left, the gold, the silver, the, the knives, Whatever was left, swords. So one of the companions, and, and for companions, this was the most halal money. So anyone you killed, you took whatever he, he had. So companions used to take this, and then they used to trade amongst one another. So one of the companions, he traded so much, till he made the most money on that day. He made the most money. So he comes to the Prophet of Allah, he's happy. 
He says, a prophet of Allah, no one today was more successful than me. Meaning what? No one made more money than I did. So Rasulullah look at our teacher, man. He sees what? He sees now that he's, he's somehow being affected by dunya. So what does the Prophet of Allah do? He redirected him. He says to him, no, I know someone that made more money than you. So, so the companion says, no, 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 Prophet of Allah, trust me, I know cuz. I was on the battlefield. I dealt with everyone. I traded with everyone. And I made more money than everyone. He says, no, no, I know someone that, that, that made more. He says, a Prophet of Allah, who? He says, anyone that prayed two rakaat, nawafil, like that, sunan, lillah ta'ala. Anyone that prayed two rakaat, it's worth more than the world and what it contains. Worth more than the world and what it contains. And that's the truth. We know the reality of dunya. We know the reality of dunya. Our hearts burn when money is taken away from us. Our hearts, they burn. And I give this example. If wallahi, if anyone here had an AMG or had, a, or had an M5, whatever it is, some hectic car, bro. You bought a hectic car and I bought it and it wasn't insured and I parked in front of my driveway and the next morning I woke up and some odd day burnt it for me, bro. Yeah? Someone burnt it for me, yeah? Automatically, your heart, what? Come on, bro. Wallahi, that's a burner. Wallah, that's a burn job. But if I missed Fajr that morning, Honestly, would you be upset? Come on, cuz, it's alright, bro. It's only a sunnah, you don't have to do it. Don't be so hard on yourself. Allah Ghafur Rahim, man. You cry for the car. You cry when someone scratches your car, you cry. But the Ummah is missing Fajr. Rasulullah he says, the sunnah of Fajr, never mind Fajr. He says, the sunnah of Fajr is worth more than the world and what it contains. And we're missing it on a daily basis. Is anyone there to cry for it? <coughs> so my brothers, we need to wake up to reality of things, man. So we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to bring the reality of dunya into our hearts. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put the love of Him and His Prophet and His Deen into our hearts. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the people of Firdaus al-A'la. Wa nusalli ala al-Habib Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Jazakumah. Are you tired of all these annoying ads on YouTube? Are you worried that a haram video might pop up? Well, the One Islam TV app is here to solve these problems, inshallah. The One Islam TV app is 100% free of any ads and is safe to browse for your peace of mind. Watch or listen to lectures and lessons while you work, rest or drive with your device switched off. Watch videos on demand or download videos and watch offline. Watch hundreds of high quality produced Islamic reminders, Quran learning videos, stories of the prophets, and so much more. Two to four new videos uploaded daily, inshallah. One Islam TV is 100% run and owned by Muslims, which means a small amount you pay for your subscription is a sadaqa jariya, continuous charity for you as we use the funds raised to continue producing more beneficial videos and reminders. Insha'Allah. The One Islam TV app is now available on Apple devices, Apple TV, Android devices, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. So you can watch on most devices and smart TVs. Download now for a free 7-day trial. May Allah reward you for supporting our work.